Hey everybody, uh, this is Amanda and this is my flipped classroom benchmark lesson. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about today is atomic structure. So before we go any deeper, what we need to think about first is what exactly is an atom? And I found this video that I think will be kind of fun to watch. So we'll watch that and then we'll dive a little bit deeper. So uh, make sure your computer isn't too loud because as we all know, Bill and I talks pretty loud. Take a look at this. It's our proper proportion giant atom model science. Now, this part isn't very giant. That's because it's just the nucleus, the middle of an atom. Now, in the air are two kinds of particles, protons and neutrons. No one knows what they would really look like. The protons have a positive electrical charge, like a spark. And the neutrons have no charge. They're neutral. They just hang out in the nucleus. Now, now, buzzing, buzzing around, around the outside, outside of the nucleus are very small particles called electrons. electrons. Maybe, Maybe you've heard of them. In fact, the, the flow of electrons, electrons from one atom to another is called electricity. electricity. If this vibrating buzzing ball is the nucleus of an atom, how far away do you think the electron will be? Well, as far as you could jump? No. As far as you could throw a ball? Uh-uh. As far as you could run? Well, yeah. yeah! Take, Take a look! look. You, you can, can see, see it from here! here. It's way out there! The electron will be here, 500 meters, five soccer fields from the nucleus. So, everything that's made of atoms, everything that you can touch and feel, is mostly empty space, empty space, empty space, empty space! Now the electron weighs off a 10,000 of those particles in the middle, and it's going around so fast, that it's, it's only, only here, here and then on that. It's here. And then here. here. And then, and then, I gotta go. So that was that. So um, some interesting things I found um, was just how far away uh, that tiny little electron was from his uh, nucleus that he had there. Um, I'm, did any of y'all think it would be that dramatic of a scale? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, well, what we're going to talk about today is uh, inside the atom, what, what's inside of an atom, what's it made out of. Then we'll talk a little bit more about the protons and the neutrons and some isotopes. And that's where we're going to stop because the rest of these are for our next lesson. So let us begin with what's inside the atom. So what, what exactly are atoms made of? Like Bill Nye said, they're mostly air, but the particles they do have are called subatomic particles. And they're made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Um, so you can see these here, these are the little red ones are the protons, and then these little blue ones, or the lighter blue ones are your neutrons. And then these ones just kind of circling around here are the electrons. So this is what would be that little black shaky ball and then these here would be that teeny tiny little thing, five football fields away. So where are they found? So as we can see, they're not all clumped together and because then there wouldn't be any empty space. So we've got here in the nucleus are our protons and neutrons. Now, if you couldn't have figured it out, the proton has a positive charge. And then our neutron, it doesn't have a negative charge. It's got a neutral charge. And that can throw you off a little bit at the start, but I'm sure you'll catch on. So then around our nucleus, we have shells and orbitals. And those contain our electrons. Now, electrons are the ones that have a negative charge. So if you can see, we've got a positive and a negative and a neutral. So these positive and negative balance each other out so that it is uh, has a state of neutral charge, uh, the atom. So the proton, those little red ones, are usually represented by the number or the letter P. So they're also found in the nucleus and they have a charge of positive one and a relative mass of one. Now we can't get 
Well, I mean, we do, but we can't mass a proton in our classroom, right? I mean, it's so tiny that would just, so we can just refer to it as one. And then our neutron, our little blue one here in the middle in the nucleus uh, is an N. So if you see a little N written anywhere, I think neutron. So like I said, that's found in the nucleus right next to your protons. And this also has a relative mass of one. So just think about that. The nucleus has both the protons and the neutrons have the same relative mass. So that's all right here. And then since they're neutral, they don't have a charge at all. So their relative charge is zero. And then our very last semicolon particle is the electrons. And so these are denoted by an E. So just think E, electron, electron. And these are found around the nucleus. So they just kind of wiggle wiggle all around here. And you guys remember what the relative mass of our protons and neutrons was? Yeah, it was a one. But look at the relative mass of this electron. One over 1,840. That's ridiculous. So that means to get the mass, this relative one of a proton, you would need 1,840 electrons to equal one of these in, in our relative mass. It's just crazy. Um, and then, like we said earlier, our electrons have a negative charge. So our protons are positive, neutrons are neutral, and then our electrons have a negative charge. So here's a little summary. Um, if you want to take notes, I would recommend pausing. You can go back. Um, if you need any clarification, you can always email, ask. Um, but this is a nice little table and it's got everything set up in a very precise way. So if you want to pause it and write this down, please do. So next we've got our proton and neutron numbers. So our atomic number is what is denoted by Z. So this is the number of protons in an atom. So the number of positively charged subatomic particles is the atomic number. And so another interesting thing is that in a neutral atom, the number of protons we have equals the number of electrons. Now let's think a little bit. So what was our charge of our protons? It's positive. And what's the charge of our electrons? Negative. So if they've got the equal amount of both and our neutrons have a neutral charge, well then they're, there they are. They've got to be equal so it's neutral. So it, it makes sense. You just got to get used to it a little bit. Um, and so our atomic numbers uh, are unique to every element. So what was our atomic number? It's the number of protons. So what that says is that every element has a different amount of protons. Um, so all elements have different atomic numbers, which comes in really handy if you want to identify them because you can always go to that. So here we have a carbon. So the atomic number of carbon is six. So how many protons do we have here? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this has six protons. And how many neutrons does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So since we know it has six protons, how many electrons does this carbon have? And it's a neutral carbon. That's right. It has six. Six electrons, too, for this neutral carbon. So where do you find the atomic number? I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense to talk about it because then, you know, we don't know where to find it. Well, our atomic number can be found on the periodic table. Each element, like you've probably seen, has its own little square. Whoops. A little too far. Its own little square. So our atomic number is the one all the way up here at the top. So if you see, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's right here. And then down here, this is our mass number, our average atomic weight. Um, so we'll talk about that in just a second.